Hello everyone. Today's topic, we are going to discuss about capacity versus velocity calculations. When to do the capacity versus velocity calculations, how to do it, and what's the benefit of using that as well. Let's get started. First, let's quickly go through the capacity calculation. The capacity calculation will be considering the available bandwidth or the availability of the team members for that given scrum team. This helps the team to plan the number of stories or the number of story points, how much they can realistically deliver, realistically commit within the given sprint. We need to make sure that we need to exclude the holidays, plan vacations, leaves, or any known unavailability of the team during the capacity calculation perspective. When do we go for the capacity calculation? When we don't have any historical data for the team. Uh, when the team is starting new with the agile implementation, or this is the first time the team is doing a scrum, or going for the first sprint planning, that's when we can generally go for the capacity calculation. And when the team is new agile team, yes, that is also when we consider the capacity calculation. And even if it is a existing team or the well aware, well matured team members, if in case the team is realigned or repurposed, either the whole team or the team members, that's when also we will be going or considering the capacity calculation. From the safe implementation perspective, if it is a brand new agile release time, we will be going for the capacity calculation. And if it is a first year planning, again, from the safe perspective, we will be considering the capacity calculation. And even if it is an existing release line, but if in case the team release line was extended or expanded and we got some new teams on board at within the release line, for that given set of new teams added, we will be recommending to consider the capacity calculation. For the remaining teams, they will go for the elastic calculation as such. So how do we calculate the capacity? We all know that majority of the cases will be following a two week sprint. In the, within the two-week sprint, we'll be having a 10 working days, excluding the weekends. So what happens within the two-week sprint? Do we have the whole productivity from the 10 working days? Need not be, might not be, will not be. What happens within the two-week sprint? The team will be taking part in the sprint planning. The team will be spending the time on the daily stand-up every day. And the team will be taking part in the sprint demo or the review towards end of the sprint and then the team will be taking some time to take part in the sprint retrospective as well. Along with that, the team will be involved in the backlog refinement for the upcoming sprint user stories as well. So considering all these things, what happens? Are we having that realistic 10 working days productivity from the team members? That's not the case. And can we expect the team members to take part in all these ceremonies at the team level and still work 10 full working days, that won't be the scenario as well. So for that reason, what happens is initial assumption we will go with. For the two week sprint out of 10 working days, we will be assuming we will be considering eight product two days. Again, I'm repeating, it is an initial assumption. We will be assuming eight product two days for the each team member, which means each team member, we can start with considering or assuming eight story points for that given two week sprint. Again, I'm repeating, it is just an initial assumption to start with the calculating the capacity until we have some historical data. So how the capacity calculation looks like, let's suppose we take three teams of 10 members each. So the number of story points considered for team A and team B are each story points for the, each team member. So the capacity calculation will come like 10 team members into each story points equal to 80 story points. Same goes with the team B as well. Whereas team C could be saying, hey, we are a brand new team. The technology is new, the domain is new, the expertise is new, the tools of face or anything is new. So we don't want to consider that full capacity of the team will consider only partial capacity. If that is the case, the team could be considering four story points or five story points for each team member. Here in the example, I mentioned five story points. In that case, the team C capacity will be 50 story points for that given sprint. And we need to remember that we need to exclude the unavailability of the team, which includes the holidays, planned vacations or leaves or any known unavailability. What is a known unavailability? 
let's suppose a team c scenario here the team c will be going through some trainings cross training reskilling or doing some documentation or getting some uh, hands on experience or expertise until they get full fledged working hands on experience so that is a known unavailability which we excluded directly from the capacity calculation right so there is one of the example which we consider as a known unavailability now moving on to velocity calculation what is the velocity calculation till now we discussed about the capacity load so let's take a look at the velocity calculation this velocity calculation when it comes into context is like when you have some historical sprints which we can take a look at it which we can consider as a difference for calculating this velocity so we will be taking the average trend of the delivered or the completed story points for the given scrum team again the velocity should be calculated individually for each and every scrum team it shouldn't be the same uh, it shouldn't be considered as an average for all the scrum teams each scrum team the way how we calculated capacity individually the same way we need to consider the or calculate the velocity as well individually for each and every given scrum team this helps the team to plan the realistic load or this helps the team to give the realistic predictability for the business team which includes the product owners product management or any leadership as well to figure out how much the team can handle how much the team can focus on how much the team can commit in the upcoming sprints or if we take from the safe perspective from the upcoming program increment as well right so the velocity formula is like average delivered story points of the given team versus divided by the number of sprints any time we are calculating this velocity we need to consider the latest sprints historical data not the initial sprints we need to consider the latest sprints delivered or completed story points into calculation and we need to take it into the formula now let's take a look at the example of again the three scrum teams with same team size so the three teams team a team b team c we have team size of 10 members each the number of story points committed or planned is same for example uh, for 480 story points so if we are assuming the teams consider the each story points per team member as part of the capacity calculation now if we look at the committed not the completed versus the delivered story points right team a might have delivered 480 story points whatever is planned or whatever is committed is delivered or achieved so team b might have uh, delivered only 420 story points for example it happens right for various reasons team c might have delivered 600 story points beyond the committed beyond the planned even that happens sometimes where the teams might have and uh, taken only little load or the teams might have taken uh, only a specific set of user stories or the teams might have not loaded fully into the sprints or it might be the case the teams might have overestimated the user stories even that could be the scenario or the situation so various reasons the teams or the team might be really well planned well matured well organized or self organized team even then that is the case where the teams might have delivered 100 to uh, 600 story points beyond the planned or committed story points so if we look at the last six sprints data the average velocity is coming as for team a it is coming as 80 story points team b it is coming as 70 story points whereas team c it is coming as 100 story points now the next time when if it is a regular scrum team the seventh sprint this velocity will be used as a reference for calculating the velocity for the upcoming sprint plan if it is a scrum team within agile release strain of the safe implementation this velocity will be considered for the second pi planning sprint 1 2 3 4 5 6 of the second pi uh, second program increment will be considering this velocity of the each and every team for their planning program increment planning perspective we might get it out why this happens 
when the team size is same or when the team are working on the same implementation. It happens in the real life as well. Right? Let's suppose three of us went to a car dealer and purchased the same model, same type of car. The dealer will be setting an example or setting a context saying that, hey, this car, this vehicle will be giving 20 kilometers per liter as an average mileage. What happens? Once we start using, I might be getting only 18 kilometers per liter as a mileage based upon my way of driving, or maybe I might be driving within the local, within the city limits with too much of traffic, uh, signals, delays, slowness, the road conditions and everything. Whereas my friend could be driving for uh, his long trips on the highways, right? In that case, you might be getting 20 or even more than that or a better mileage when compared to me or when compared to my vehicle. The same vehicle is giving a different mileage for different in instances, different situations, right? The next time if I myself go on a long trip, I might be getting better mileage as well. The same thing happens with team B, team C or team A as well. Next time when we calculate the velocity, these numbers might not be fixed. It might be revised, it might be changed as well. So that is what happens when we take the velocity into consideration. So this helps the business team to get a understanding of what could be the predictability by this given team. How many story points can be planned for these respective teams so that they can bring that man's story points into the backlog and take it to the planning, whether it is a sprint planning or the program increment planning as well. Hope this information helps you to get a clarity of how we can make use of the capacity versus velocity calculation and when and where or how we will make use of this calculation. Hope you like this video. Thank you.